There is a very great tank in the shop, and there is also the new Object 590 available. So, should you spend your money on anything in the World of Tanks Blitz shop, or do you rather get your favorite brand of lube instead? Let's have a look. If you are thinking about spending a lot of money on the shop and you do end up having a coupon, then the only really good option here is the T77. Then in the resource section, well, we have a 10 million credits in here, so these bundles aren't really that great. These, however, these do work if you are looking for a lot of gold and you also play a lot, because 200 battles is what you're going to need to play, but this is not too bad if you play a lot, if you need the gold. Those can definitely help. Don't buy credits for gold ever. Tank section starts off with a 268 version 4, which is a solid vehicle, but in my opinion here a little bit overpriced. 47.99 is basically the price of Helldivers 2 and at least one of these bad boys to tell Sony how you feel. 22,500 gold for that as well. You at least get 30 days of premium here, you get these mystery boxes, but yeah. They yeah, also have all the epic boosters in here, which is very nice. Obviously, the, the camouflage and stuff, which Wargaming pretends have value, but don't. Unless you like the style of it, then, then they have value. But if you don't like the style of the camo, if you don't care about the camo, they have a value of exactly zero, which is what I think. So anyway, this vehicle, it's very solid. The problem is the sides here, they're very weak. So if you turn the vehicle like that, you can get penned right here. The lower plate is one of the very few vehicles where you're going to struggle to pen the lower plate with standard rounds. You can also penetrate this uh, viewfinder up here. But generally, solid vehicle. It's not as fast as it was in World Tanks PC. It's also not that accurate. Only 5 degrees of gun depression. So you're going to need to really know what you're doing with this vehicle. I personally would recommend the Badger over this one. Steel Monsters, ignore that. Not worth it. Two Comrades. I made a video on that specifically. So check it out. It's on the channel. Basically, it's a good bundle. Price, a little bit too high. But it is a solid bundle nonetheless. That can be worth picking up. Be it the 25TU is a little bit boring. But then... We get, ooh, Smashing Platoon. Now, it saddens me that the M4 Yo is in here because the Chimera is one of the greatest premium tanks in the game, or now collector tanks, but that doesn't really matter. In the game, that is really worth picking up. Now, 2 kdpm, 440 alpha damage, 0.3 actually, 10 degrees of gun depression, solid enough mobility, the armor is fine enough. I mean, you're gonna get penetrated around the gun mantlet, you're gonna get penetrated in a lower plate, but if you keep this vehicle moving, you're gonna be somewhat fine. Especially with the 440 alpha damage, you don't have to peak all that many times, so that's not really that big of a disadvantage. Because, yeah, I just have to peak a lot less. Now, the M4 Yo is a little bit of a wasted space in this bundle, unfortunately, because it's not a real autoloader. It has a 7 second interclip reload, so it just... It's like the RS3 Defender. It pretends to be an autoloader, but it isn't really. And I would have rather liked to see a good vehicle in this bundle, like a T-54A2, like a T-77. I think even a T-2065 would have been fine at this point. Because this vehicle, unfortunately, is a little bit of a waste of space. Because of the configuration of the gun. If it was a real autoloader, we could definitely talk about it. It does have at least 80 degrees of gun depression. Here's a little piece of advice, because this thing kind of annoys me about Blitz. If you don't read the numbers. If you're too lazy to read the numbers yourself, you can never expect to be a good player, right? Each shot has 310 alpha damage, reasonable penetration, but again, it's not a real autoloader. It kind of drags it down a little. Seven seconds inch clip. It just makes it a single shot gun with one weird reload. So basically, if this would be 10k, we can definitely talk about it. But the Chimera is a great vehicle. No doubt about that. But the M4Yo does not justify the price of this bundle whatsoever. It'd probably be better off just getting the Chimera on its own, even though 8.5k for the vehicle itself is also a little bit over the top. The MX prototype, well, it's a good tank. 24 euros. Eh, could, could think about it. Obviously, it's a tier 9. It's going to do less damage than tier 10. It's going to get less credits than tier 8, so it's a little bit in the middle. But this is a very great vehicle. It is somewhat cheaper than the Shafir Cho, and obviously the gun's slightly a little bit worse, but the rest of it around is massively better than the Shafir Cho. One of the very few tin eyes that is worth picking up is this one, just like the Object 752. And then here we have the Object 2 of TU and the Kennedy one on their own, 7.5k. Here's the thing, if the Camaro would be 7.5k, I would be like, yes, buy it right now. But this thing's 7.5k, when it was sold for 5,000 before, so now it's a bit of unfair thing and 12,500 for the Kennedy one on its own is a bit much we could expect something like 10 10k right here for this vehicle because these are old vehicles they've been in the game for a very long time I mean you expect the new tanks to be insanely overpriced but a tank that's been in the game for five years you can't charge that in my opinion so yeah also fire and ice they're they're always here and disappointed obviously inflation is a thing and you know you gotta jack up the prices but 
Wargame already increased the gold price. So if they increase the gold price, and if they increase the vehicle price, they increase it twice. Anyway, and then there's something irrelevant down here. There's the new crate tank, the Object 590. That I'm going to talk about in detail a little bit later, but uh, it's in crates, so don't buy it. It's not worth it, and uh, I'll tell you more about that later. And the same goes for all the other crates down here. I mean, the, the grand surprise. Uh, they're all, you know, they're not that great. Right, like these do at least have somewhat of a 20% drop chance in here. And like the Grand Surprise draw was pretty good because it just gave you a positive return. This thing, well, it depends. I mean, the 1.5k gold and then you're going to get something out of here with the gold. Uh, so this is not too bad because obviously you get the gold here. And then out of the inclusions here, you're always going to get some gold back. So this is not that bad of a deal for 6 euros because you get 1.5k gold guaranteed and then... a variable amount of gold here obviously you, you have to do hope that you don't get uh, the tier 6 container because then yeah it's still gambling like don't gamble tier 9 tank container collect them all they're awful and the awesome containers they're, they're not so awesome and then there's also the tvp draw which well first of all it's draw which makes it not good and then the vehicle itself is also not really worth buying it all. I mean, it does have high DPM, but that's about where the good things about this thing end. And the Pershing claims yet another victim, because comparing this vehicle to the 274A and the Pershing, yeah, we're not getting much. We're getting armor. That's what we're getting here. We're getting excellent turret armor that the Pershing kind of also has if you keep it fiddling because the turrets are very small, so if you move it back and forth, you're going to get the same benefit. But anyway, let's ignore that for a second. 182 millimeters of penetration already invalidates it from being a good credit grinding vehicle. Now, you ask yourself, hmm, but a Brask and a Bugetto have also that little penetration. Well, well, they have a lot better mobility, so they can drive around the back of vehicles a lot more effectively. And besides that, I would never recommend the Bugetto to grind credits. Anyway, so not a great credit grinding vehicle. So that's Half the value proposition's already out the window with that, with the 182 penetration. It's just gone. The heat rounds on this vehicle are great, but you gotta pay for them, which means if you use this vehicle mainly to grind credits, not great. You're better off with a high penetration heavy tank or a high penetration medium tank. And that we go. Or one that you can play really well. If it's this one, that's nice. But that already throws that part of the value out the window. Now it is slightly better. I'd say them the majority of all these uh, Soviet style medium tanks, T44-100, T54 uh, first prototype, it's a lot better than those, clearly. Especially on the third armor, that's where this thing is strong. It also has 8 degrees of gun depression, above average for a Soviet vehicle. Not too bad there. And again, look at the stats comparison to the Pershing and tell me that that is any better. Just tell me. Tell me down in the comments. Can you honestly say that it's better? Except in the armor department, which you can mitigate in the Pershing by wiggling the damn thing because the turret's tiny. So, what you have here is you have another vehicle that gets into the same row of it's not worthy as a credit grinding vehicle, it's way too overpriced because it's in crates, so that already completely throws out any further value it might have had, and because it's not that great at grinding credits, it also has to be really, really great at the game. Like, it would have to be so much better than all the other vehicles to make up for that loss that you have to do three, four shots a game more to make up for the lost credits that you get when you fire the heat rounds, which are obviously very good. Like, it has great heat rounds, but you have to fire more. You have to do more, so the vehicle has to be much better to make up for that disadvantage. But it isn't much better than that. Obviously, remember, if you look at these player statistics, the majority of these statistics are influenced by who plays it rather than what the tank is and how the tank stats are. Um, so basically, we have a vehicle that's above average. It's not good for grand crits. It was not a good value. And it is one of those vehicles that you're really not going to play all too often because most likely, if you're if you're a new player, this can be a great entry if it were at 7,000 gold, 6,000, 7,000 gold. This would be a great entry for Soviet medium tanks because it, it is one of the better Soviet medium tanks. But... If you're already an experienced player, you're not getting anything. You're like you're not getting anything that you haven't already experienced. Yes, you're getting a little bit more turret armor, but you're not getting more crits. You're probably not gonna get more fun. You might get a little bit more performance, but in terms of the value here, there is nothing. There. Let's say if it had 220 millimeters of penetration, I'd be like, sure, frig it. If it 
put, gets another put in the shop for real money, not for crates. It's worth it. But it has awful penetration. It doesn't really have that much advantages besides its third armor. Another dud. And the Pershing claims yet another victim. Because if it has a premium tank, you can't be better than a damn Pershing. And you can't be good at grinding crates. What are you? 